The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being with us each and every single week. We've got a great show lined up for you on what will be another great season of Double Tap TV. Because this week, we're talking all about the latest release of Apple's iPhone operating system, iOS 15. I am Marco Flalo, joined each and every single week by Stephen Scott. Stephen, another big release with a lot of new features, a lot of new iPhones on the way. Everyone's talking about them. But we, as always, have something unique. That's right, Mark. Everybody is going on about how wonderful this new operating system is, whether it's spatial audio and share play within FaceTime calls, which is pretty cool, to be fair. Uh, or maybe it's the new focus mode for getting things done without as many distractions that's appealing to people. Or maybe it's the improved handling of photos in iOS 15. Whatever it is, you're going to find a lot of e-ink being used up to talk about it. However... We like to be different here on Double Tap TV, and uh, we are delving into the settings app and into accessibility. There are lots of new features in here, and we're very keen to share those all important updates with you today. And of course, to do that, we've got a special guest lined up, as we do each and every single year. She's a podcaster, she's a journalist. Writer Shelley Brisbane joins us soon here on Double Tap TV from her home in Texas to talk all about accessibility in iOS 15. But we're going to talk about a few mainstream features too, right, Stephen? Absolutely. We leave no one out here, Mark. Actually, one of the biggest announcements that really caught the attention of journalists when iOS 15 was announced was actually born out of an accessibility feature itself. I'm talking about live text. Now, this is where you open up your camera app, you hold your phone up to a sign, or perhaps it's a phone number printed on a window or building, and the text becomes active on the screen. You can then tap on the number that displays on the screen from the image you're looking at and make a call, send an email, use an address for location information. You know, it's incredibly powerful and I can really see that being a massive feature for blind people as well as everyone else. You know, I really do like that feature. It's funny how such an old feature really has made a comeback in what's you know new and fancy and shiny these days. Do you think we're getting to a point where accessibility tools like this are becoming part of the mainstream? Absolutely, I do. I think that. I think it's great as well. You know, one of the best examples in recent years of mainstream tech that massively benefited the blind community as well as the able-bodied community was the Amazon Echo. You know, it was a device that didn't require vision to be used. It meant that anyone could use it, therefore. You know, and I should say Amazon went further later on with developments in screen-based Echo devices that helped deaf people. And then they even created the ability for someone who used a computer voice as their own because maybe they didn't have the ability to communicate verbally themselves. They could even communicate with the Echo as well. You know, the key point here is that all of this was done with a device off the shelf at any Best Buy or online store shelf, and it proves it can be done. And all the major tech companies seem to be on board, which is great. Well, you know, we've got brand new iPhones coming up. We've uh, got a rumored Apple Watch coming up. We're going to get in-depth with iOS 15 in just a moment here on Double Tap TV. Now, Shelley Brisbane, she's an author. She's a podcaster with her own show called Parallel, which brings people in the mainstream business community together with blind and low vision people to discuss the issues of the day and bring perspective from the opinions expressed. Now, it's a really interesting listen, so do look that up on all your podcast platforms of your choice. Now, Shelly is on deck with us. In just a moment, she'll be here on Double Tap TV. But if you guys want to get involved, the email address, as always, is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, don't forget you can reach out at Double Tap Canada and use the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Shelly Brisbane, next here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. We're back on Double Tap TV, excited to dive into iOS 15. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott by my side each and every single week. You guys at home, always getting involved. Thank you for all the emails to feedback at ami.ca. And thank you so much for following us on Twitter. If you're not, what are you waiting for? It's at Double Tap Canada and use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I got to be honest with these guys and, and Stephen. 
we're really upping our social media game this year. We're going to be posting a lot of historical clips from other shows. We're going to be engaging you a lot more. So please do follow us at Double Tap Canada. Stephen, have you got iOS 15 installed? Because I know I only took the leap of faith on my iPad. I'm kind of on the fence as to whether or not I wait for the release where I install this latest beta on my phone. What have you done? Uh, yeah, I did go ahead and download it. I tried it out and um, I think it's actually really good. I will say that the iOS 15 update, even from the very first developer beta, was actually pretty stable. And I'm talking about it from a voiceover point of view. That generally is where it shows up the, the cracks. But no, it was actually pretty good this time and tons of new features to play with. Well, you know, someone who surely has installed iOS 15 from day one is going to give us a deep dive in a lot of the features for you and us together at the same time uh, is uh, Shelley Brisbane. Yeah, she's a podcaster, she's a writer, and she's low vision herself. Shelley Brisbane is on deck with us here on Double Tap TV. Shelley, great to have you back with us. It's great to be here, Stephen. Thanks for having me. So let's jump right into iOS 15. There are tons of new features that we're going to talk about, but I want to get your top feature up front. What is exciting you in this latest update? Well, I think the live text feature is great. And that is one of those that's been pegged as a mainstream feature, but that has so many implications for accessibility. Uh, but, but live text will allow you to point your camera at an image that has text in it and capture that text. So you're OCRing text, but you're doing it not as if you're using a scanning app, but in a in a in your environment. Shelley, when when you and I first met back on the radio show Double Tap Canada, which you can hear by the way every Thursday at eight PM Eastern on AMI Audio, I think it was you who was talking about the books you've written, showcasing the accessibility features in that year's given OS. Tell us more about that. I do a book every year called iOS Access for All: Your Comprehensive Guide to Accessibility for iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch. And as the name not only implies, but says straight out, it's about all of the accessibility features in iOS. And I update it for each version of iOS. There will be an iOS 15 edition later this fall. And what's the challenge in keeping all that up to date considering how often Apple updates their software? Well, the easy part is that it's templated so that I can base it on what I did before. The challenging part is that First of all, Apple obviously updates and changes things every year, and they don't, they don't issue a guide that tells you how they're doing that. So you kind of have to learn what those new features are and how they work. And I'm my own first beta reader and guinea pig, because if I can't figure out how something works, then I'm not going to be able to show my readers how it works. The other thing is just that uh, these features are focusing on different accessibility groups and I'm a person with low vision. And so I'm really good at voiceover and magnification and all those other features, but I have to spend time learning about switch control and voice control and features that people with other disabilities use. And I, just because I'm insecure or paranoid or whatever, I always feel like I have to take extra care with those features so that somebody who doesn't have the same disability I have will get a valuable experience from reading the book. Okay, so maybe let's split this up for our audience, okay? There are, there are two branches of features here that I guess we want to look at for visually impaired uh, viewers. Uh, you know, there's low vision features and there are blindness specific features. So let's start with low vision. What's new in iOS 15 for those who have still got some usable vision but need features such as magnifier, large text, high contrast, that kind of thing? Well, the Magnifier app continues to be updated. It had a pretty good update in iOS uh, 14. And the, mo most of the features to do with uh, low vision and blindness, and they kind of go together, have to do with interactivity in, in the camera app and how the camera app is able to uh, interact with the environment and tell you things using artificial intelligence. And that is applied to the Magnifier app as well. The Magnifier app is also a standalone app. Used to, you had to go through accessibility shortcut to get to it. Now you can have the Magnifier as an app on your home screen or an app library, however you like to use it. Okay, let's switch to blindness specific features, such as voiceover. What's new in iOS 15 in that field? Well, voiceover's basic functions aren't really changed that much. Again, it, it focuses on how you interact with the camera. So uh, for example, you can with uh, a, take, a, take an image or either in the camera or in the photos app. And if you have voiceover on, you can move your finger around the image and you can have voice so you can have iOS and voiceover give you its best guess about what's in the image. So instead of just having it, having the camera pointed at something and saying two faces near the edge, 
you can interactively sort of understand in a deeper way what's going on in the image and where things are relative to one another in the image. And so that's probably the biggest thing. And you mentioned live text. I mean, that is such a great feature and it's so powerful for any user. Yeah, it is a great feature. And as I say, it has applications for, for almost anyone who's an iOS user. So anything from something that's more similar to traditional scanning certain uh, all the way out to oh there's a sign across the way i'd like to read it or there's a menu on the wall i'd like to read or just i wonder what that coffee mug somebody put in front of me says and so you can capture that text and you can read it but ha since you have it captured you can also manipulate it and you can mark it up and you can use it in any way you want to so shelly it sounds like from what you're saying that a lot of the work that's gone into improve accessibility in iOS 15 features are actually under the hood and we're not gonna necessarily see them, right? Yeah, there have been some braille issues in the past, which is not, it is, it is, it is and it isn't voiceover. So if you're not a braille user, you might not encounter some of those issues, but there've been bad bugs. And I think over the course of the, the updates, uh, there have been attempts to, to fix those bugs. So the voiceover changes, I think, are, are more, more subtle and under the hood. The kinds of things they usually do, like in, in iOS 14, we got some, some updates like this where they just gave you more access to customizing your voiceover experience. And so you, you couldn't say that voiceover changed all that much, but you had some flexibility in the way you used it. That's iOS 14. In iOS 15, I don't even know that there are that many features like that. It doesn't really it doesn't really feel like voiceover has, has changed as much as some of the other accessibility features have. Okay, we're in conversation with Shelly Brisbane, host of the Parallel Podcast. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back and continue the conversation. Again, if you guys want to get involved, the email address is feedback at ami.ca. And don't forget, follow us on Twitter at DoubleTapCanada and use the hashtag, which is AskDoubleTap, so that we can have your questions and feature them on a future show. We take a quick break and come back here and wrap it up. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV talking all about Apple's latest operating system. Now, with new devices on their way, it's fun to see how the operating system is going to change for all those billions of iPhones that are already in the wild. Not everybody's getting a brand new phone, Stephen. Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott with you, along with Shelley Brisbane from the Parallel Podcast. Now, Shelley, uh, we've talked about several of the wonderful features for blind and low vision people in iOS 15, but can we look a bit more broadly now to get a sense of what improvements have been made in this new version of the Apple iPhone operating system for people with other disabilities? Anything stand out for you on that, Shelley? I'm really intrigued by the sound options and switch control. So switch control uses either a dedicated switch that's connected to your iOS device to uh, replace a touch gesture if you're not able to touch the screen, if not able to touch the screen or if you have difficulty touching the screen. And you can use a hardware switch, you can use the screen itself with the camera, or um, you can uh, you can use the, the FaceTime camera. But now they've added the, these sounds so that if, for example, you're able to make popping and clicking noises with your mouth, uh, switch control can be made to understand those and you map those sounds to gestures. And that mirrors what people who have physical disabilities have been able to do with other kinds of devices that they use to interact either with computers or with uh, speech boards and that sort of thing. So I just keep, voice control is one of those things, is, pardon me, switch control is one of those things that if you're not somebody who uses a hardware switch, and that includes a lot of people, it, it may not seem like it's for you. And, and now I think they're expanding uh, switch control so that it becomes available to more people, people who don't necessarily have a rigged out iPad with four or five switches, which is the way a lot of switch control users interact with their devices. They may have an iPad uh, mounted on their wheelchair with several switches that are custom configured. And those are great configurations for folks. Uh, but but switch control is now becoming something that people with a, a wider variety of hardware accessories and also disability types are probably going to be able to use. You know, we're talking iOS here, Shelley, but of course there are updates across the board to Mac OS, to watch OS, to iPad OS, and so on and so forth. Have you had a chance to review any of those operating systems? A little bit. I mean, I look at watch OS and Mac OS. Mac OS is interesting because there's more uh, integration between iOS and Mac OS, either in terms of apps that work on both, say if you have an M1 Mac, uh, and also in terms of iPad OS, where you can actually uh, put the screen of your 
uh, Mac on an iPad if you want to do that. And the, the nice thing about the integration between Mac OS and iPad OS is that you essentially can give yourself a second screen, which is helpful for a lot of people. But if you're somebody with low vision and you need to magnify something a lot, having that extra screen real estate is kind of helpful. And that's not particularly new in iOS 15, but they do seem to, to keep updating those features. The, 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 uh, the Mac OS Monterey that we're going to also see this fall uh, has more detailed, more, more and better support for sharing multiple screens, and including iPads, and that's pretty groovy. This might be a bit controversial to ask you this, Shelley, so I, I apologize, but there does seem to be a bit of a push now by companies like Apple, and most notably, I'd say Microsoft, to not just bake in accessibility tools, but also to stand up and talk about those features and promote that they are for everyone, not just for people with disabilities. That's not the controversial part. That's great news. However, I wonder, are some of these features, you know, like magnifier, large dynamic type, high contrast, which have got issues, uh, which you only know about if you ever use these features, are they ready for the wider public to use at this point? Are they, are they ready for prime time? You know, I, I feel some of these features in some ways are a bit immature. And does that create a problem for us longer term? I think the problem is that the features that are used by people with disabilities on a daily basis and how well those features work are a conversation that's hard to have in the mainstream because the mainstream wants to hear that accessibility features exist and what people are quote unquote helped by those features they're not really interested in how well they work. And you can, you can tell that's true by reading mainstream press about accessibility features, because just the fact that they exist is about as detailed a level as, and I, and I talk to nerds all the time. I talk to people who write reviews of products and who are very persnickety about really detailed aspects of iOS and Mac OS, but they have no idea how accessibility features work or whether a particular accessibility feature works as well as it should. And, and that lack of curiosity is unfortunate. And as somebody who writes about this stuff and who talks to both people in the accessibility world and outside of it, it's frustrating. But when I think about the bigger picture of that, I just, I'm not sure whether it's all that important that they know uh, that they, they have a detailed level of understanding. What is important is that they listen to those of us who do and that they take what we have to say in terms of, hey, such and such a company is doing really well. This is a feature worth praising or, hey, such and such a company really has a long way to go or they made a boo-boo on this release uh, and, and that, that they should be evaluating products based on the quality of the accessibility or at least allowing us to impact their feelings about that based on our detailed knowledge. Shelley, tell us where we can get your iOS Access for All book and also how people can listen to you on your podcast. My book is at iosaccessbook.com. And right now the iOS 14 version is avail available. Once Apple has announced the availability of iOS 15, buying the iOS 14 edition will get you automatically a free iOS 15 version when it's released, but don't do that until Apple has released iOS 15. Um, my show is Parallel Podcast on the Relay Network, and that's relay.fm slash parallel. And I interview folks both inside and outside the accessibility world uh, talking technology. Shelley, but it's been an absolute pleasure to have you back with us here on Double Tap TV. Come back soon. Great to be here. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so much, Shelley, and thank you guys at home for getting involved this week. Stephen, what's your favorite iOS 15 feature? You've, you know, you took the dive from day one on your iPad. I know I did from day one on the iPad. On the iPhone, I'm still kind of on the fence, but is there anything particular, whether it's accessibility related or non, that stands out. Yeah, I think for me it's two, and we've mentioned them already actually, but focus mode I think is brilliant. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense of what Do Not Disturb was trying to be, and I'm quite pleased about that. And I like that again, the, and this is the joy of Apple. Everything's spread across all the operating systems. So focus exists across Mac, it exists across iPad and iPhone. Uh, and, and you know, it'll work across those devices as well. So if you ask one to go into focus mode, they'll all respect it. I love that. And I think that's the great thing about Apple. There are some other great features coming as well, uh, such as universal uh, control, which means I'll be able to use the same keyboard and mouse across multiple devices. That, of course, applies more to iPad and Mac OS. I really, you know, I find that the biggest improvements I see 
end up being on the iPad, how mm. that becomes more and more like a usable day-to-day -day device. I find that the features and the widgets and just the way they enhance, especially the multitasking, really makes it more useful to me. And and that excites me because I think the iPad is one of these devices that it's so fast now. It has the same processor as the desktop computers in, in terms of Apple's own silicone that they really need to, to up their game when it comes to the software side of things on the iPad. And they're doing it slowly. I think they need to allow third parties to really up their game and start seeing some of these pro apps come out with and you know Apple companion versions or or just full-fledged versions of some of these applications like you know Premiere, Adobe Audition, Final Cut, even Microsoft Word is mm. doing a, you know a better job. Microsoft is doing a great job at making their apps as useful as possible on the iPad that it's becoming almost blurred you know, between the desktop version that you'd find on a Windows device or a Mac versus what you see on an iPad. I agree with you. I think the pandemic has slowed this down a little bit. I imagine developers are working on all of these things you want. I know you want Premiere available on your iPad. You want to be able to do all that. And that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, I think it's coming. It's probably just lagging behind a little bit, but it, it must be at the center of these companies' minds. They know that iPad is becoming what will eventually be the replacement for the, the MacBook. Well, you guys at home, what is your favorite feature in iOS 15? Do you have the beta installed? Is it something you're looking forward to? Let us know what you're looking forward to and what that chain game changing feature is and you can do that by email to feedback at ami.ca or you can reach out on twitter again it's at double tap canada and don't forget that hashtag which is ask double tap on behalf of shelly brisbane stephen scott i am marco flalo we'll chat again next week here on double tap tv hosted by marco flalo and stephen scott editing jordan steves and marco flalo voiceover anna vicino integrated described video specialist ron rickford coordinating producer jennifer johnson director production kara nye director programming brian purdue vp content development and programming john melville president and ceo david errington copyright 2021 accessible media inc